You can see the horses over there looking at me, hoping I'm going to move the fence for them, which I'm not. Sorry, ladies. Um, but here I fenced off an area of the field and I planted this spring uh, a mixture of uh, silver birch and spindle. You can see the spindle here. And you can see dock is taking effect. So I've strum it once. It looks like I'm going to have to strum it again. This is another spindle. But I'm walking along checking the trees because um, you can see the trees are tied with these. And with the recent rain, they're going to want to grow. And this is very tight. This is holding it up to this stake. So I'm coming along and I'm clipping this cable and pulling out the bamboo that they were planted with. So you can see they're all like that. They've all got the birch have um, the bamboo and the stake to hold them in place. So I'm just going to clip out the bamboo because these ties, I don't know if you can see, are beginning to bite into the tree and I don't want the bark on the exterior of the tree is the life's blood of the tree. That's where they get their all their nutrients and everything. Not the center area, but wherever the bark is, it's the transporter between the bark and the center of the tree and the um, inside of the tree is like how the nutrients all get up here. So I don't want to squeeze this. See, that's how you can, you can kill a tree very easily. All you have to do is cut a line anywhere on its trunk around. It just has to be a few millimeters wide all the way around the trunk and then you can, that kills a tree. So you don't have to chop it down. You can kill it by separating the bark um, just by that much all the way around the circumference of the tree and that kills the tree. So the life's blood, I don't want to block off. So that's why this one you can see there is beginning to push into the tree just very slightly but I want these to take off. So I want to prevent any hindrance. So I'm gonna walk along here and be snipping these ties, but leaving this tie, which is much looser and still will hold the tree upright. So that's my Saturday job for the day is tending to this plantation that we planted this spring. I've also planted interspersed with the um, silver birch and the spindle. These are homegrown cherry seedlings that we dug up elsewhere and planted in here. And this, this cherry didn't make it. Some of them, sometimes they just don't make it. So this cherry didn't make it. And uh, let's see, is there another cherry that made it? There's, this is a scrub plum. This is not a cherry. This is a self-sown wild scrub plum and I'm gonna leave it grow. Then this is spindle. And what's gonna happen is as the silver birch on this sweep, as it matures all the way around, it goes round like that. As it matures in the autumn, there will be this amazing yellow of the silver birch. And then this turns a beautiful pink uh, red that will be in the understory. So when you're coming up the driveway, you will have this incredible vista in the autumn, as well as in the spring, it'll look beautiful because the spindle flowers dance amongst the baby greens of the silver birch. So this is planning for the future. And Inca seems to have found something interesting to dig up as I'm trimming tree stays. And so this beautiful spindle, I'm a huge fan of spindle which a lot of people don't plant. It's a good food for wildlife and it's really, really, really beautiful. Little, it's a small shrub kind of thing. Look at that, dig, dig, dig. So here I'm gonna cut this. You can see right there that uh, piece and you can see there's the bamboo. This is the tree. 
So I'm gonna cut right here. And you can just see the band right there where the pressure was on. And see, that's what I'm trying to alleviate is you can see the discoloration right there. See, above my finger compared to the rest of the trunk. And that's what I'm trying to alleviate the pressure on these young trees so that they will grow uh, stronger and faster. More food up their stems, the better for everybody.